You're listening to Arts Peak for Southern Colorado, presented by KCME and the Colorado Springs Independent. We continue with our inquiry into the Black Rose Acoustic Society with our guests Hope Greitzer and Charlie Hall. Just in time for Valentine's Day, a small sampling of the Lover's Waltz from Black Rose, whose violinist Hope Greitzer and guitarist Charlie Rose came to the studio to talk with us. But the conversation centered around another of their creations, the Black Rose Acoustic Society, the organization that takes over the Black Forest Community Center at least two Fridays a night each month. Our curiosity was piqued to find out how in only five and a half years, an idea a few people had once has turned into a solid part of the musical life in our region. Black Rose Acoustic Society, what does that mean in terms of the musical style? And the basic guidelines we have right now are, if it has to be plugged in to be heard, then it's not, it's not for our stage. We're um, acoustic music, and the other drum guideline right now is no drum sets. Is it no and drum sets or, or nothing that requires uh, drum sticks? Sticks. Okay. Well, the idea is that there is a lot of good percussion, and, and certainly, you know, you don't want to filter that out, you know. Well, the guy a brings a Yamaha double bass drum set with two hi-hats and a ride cymbal. Who wants that? What styles of music end up showing up on the stage? Swing, cowboy, folk, Irish, bluegrass. Am I missing something? Country. Yeah, we, we really don't have any stylistic limitations at Song, all. Songwriters. That's probably another. It's not really folk, but yeah. original songwriters. You know, people get yeah. there and do their own stuff. Yeah, songwriters, that, that, it, it's a good place to, for a songwriter to try out his stuff. So my, my conception that you guys are primarily bluegrass is just really off-center. Yeah, we're really not. Yeah. We're really trying to cross the spectrum. Yeah, okay. How did this thing get going, though? Well, I mean, we know you're five and a half years old, which is actually for... Uh, the, the success that I'm hearing about is pretty an incredible rise in five and a half years, but what's, uh, what's the origin of this group? Basically, we wanted some place to play. There was really not anywhere around town at the time, and Charlie and I pulled our lists of musicians that we knew and sent out flyers and made phone calls and said, hey, we're going to get the community center on Friday. Come on out and uh, we'll play some music. And I think that was probably about the only rule. It was pretty unstructured. The first session we had was just uh, the microphone set up on stage and anyone jumped up there who had a song come into their head and if somebody else knew the song, they ran up on stage with them and joined right yeah. in. It was very yeah. unstructured. Yeah. We paid so. 20 bucks an hour to rent the community center. We probably And we charged a buck at the door. I guess we had, what, uh, maybe 30 people there? Yeah. Something like that. And it was real loose. It was real loose. <laughs> What, what were you thinking of when you said that? No, no just, just, just... If I can play a psychologist, what do you mean, <laughs> real loose, Charlie? No, I just, I, I mean, uh, the, 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 the sound was, uh, was, what, just a... Just turn on the mic? Yeah. And here's a speaker and... Yeah, there was a Kmart quality to it, actually. Oh, I see. <laughs> and, it, yeah, it was real loose. I guess in just a few meetings after that, we kind of got the notion of scheduling people... You know, you have this much time and so forth. Yeah. We went through a big phase of trying to control crowd noise and moving the stage all around the room to find the best spot where yeah. people would people who were talking by the kitchen wouldn't interfere with listening. And yeah. It's been a big evolution over the years. Yeah. Why do you think it's worked? What, what's right about the, the idea? It's community, I think, first. Yeah. People know that this is a place they can go and have fun on a Friday night. For people that want to perform music and people that want to hear a really spontaneous thing. It's amazing because the people that you attract, musicians, audience, have figured out something. They figured out that there isn't really a single opportunity to have any kind of profound contact, profound community. Yeah. Um, Say for a visit to the church or the synagogue. And the performers want to play there because they know that the audience will be listening. And they do, and they're incredibly supportive of oh, the performers yeah. on stage. It doesn't matter how they might, you know, come across, because we get people, and that's actually one of the points of the organization, is to encourage people who've never been on stage to get up there and take a chance. And the audience feels for them. And, you know, I've seen people, first time on stage, and 
they're so nervous, they're shaking, and they still get a thunderous applause. And yeah. Do you guys actually live off a mission statement? Got to. Yeah. We, we, really did that. Do. we did that after about six months. We um, filed for our nonprofit status and set up bylaws and the mission statement and the whole thing. Okay. So, so what is what is, is it? Is what is it? <laughs> um, I don't know if I can quote it, but okay. the basic guidelines are for the preservation, promotion, education, and enjoyment of acoustic music. We talked to a, a number of people, and everyone mentioned that you guys were big into education. Yeah, um, that's to me. That's one of the big important focuses of the group is is the education piece of it. Both um, promoting performance skills, people to learn, you know, how to use a microphone, how to get up on stage, how to react with an audience. All right. So it started thirty people one night about five and a half years ago. What do you normally bring in on a uh, on a Friday night where you have open mic and a featured act? How many people are usually there? Um, we've been packing the house lately, about 175, 180 people. Mm. A lot of it's families. Um, people tell their friends and come out on a Friday night. And, and how many people <laughs> were in that place when Tom Paxton played? Uh, <laughs> 275, or they're right, right yeah. at a little over 275. So if you're packing the house all the time and you bring in feature acts and they're, they're overpacking the house, isn't it time for a new place, a new facility? No. No. Oh, Why not? That, well, you've been there. It's 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 the perfect place to have that kind of music. Big log building. It's just got that that ambience or that take it home. <laughs> <laughs> you, what you said. Yeah. Um, somebody, Pat Donahue, um, uh, fingerstyle guitarist, we had out said that it's like playing in the inside of a guitar, playing in that building. And it's kind of yeah. true. You know, you got all this wood around you, and it's rustic and traditional music, traditional building. You know, we definitely want to stay with that building. Why are people going nuts for this music at this point in time? I mean, all this techno stuff going on and, and this compact disc going nuts and everything. Why, why are actually audiences growing for this kind of music now? What is, it, what is so special about it? I have this very strong feeling about perfection. You can go out, you can go to, go to Media Play or whatever and buy perfection for 15 bucks all day long. And whether it's Mariah Carey or, or calm yourself, calm yourself. Pa, yeah, per, uh, Pavarotti or whoever, it's it's perfection. It's been made perfect in the studio, and then you can play it on a CD player, which is pretty darn perfect too. The only thing it's missing is humanity. It's missing that little piece of it. Miss you just miss the warmth of human interaction. So really, you know, I, I look at the, the newsletter and the photos. This is like a family you guys have. Oh, there, yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. That's, that's kind of the atmosphere we like to convey. I mean, that's what we're shooting for. Yeah. Speaking of community, that's, that's been one of our focuses the past year in the Black Rose is to try and expand out into the community a little more. And we've set up a scholarship program um, to fund music lessons. And we were underwriting the expenses of a music club at the Boys and Girls Club for Colorado Springs. It's incredible. My hat's off to you because uh, uh, people really have a, an alternative from the, the crazy, isolating world that we have just by stepping into uh, the Black Forest Community Center on a given Friday night. You can't help but have fun. Thank you so much for uh, sharing how this whole thing got started and, and how it's going to continue. And mostly I get to say, job well done. Well, thank you. Thank you. For a couple of bucks, you can buy your way into the Black Forest Community Center for an evening of open mic and jamming, as well as a featured act on the second and fourth Fridays of every month. For information, enter www.blackroseacoustic.org.